I start transferring my sketch on a canvas by creating grid. You may think I don't need it, I will easily redraw it on canvas just the way I want. And this is a big mistake. When you start working on a sketch, it's really a small one and you have no choice but focusing on silhouettes and uh, big shapes. Uh, when you start on a big canvas, immediately you start looking at smaller details and lose the big picture. So please make this very simple grid, connect two corners, make a line, two opposite corners, make a line. Uh, now you have a center and draw a horizontal and a vertical line through the center and continue breaking into smaller parts until you get the desired grid. And repeat on your canvas the same grid you drew on a sketch. You can use a large cardboard tool or a piece of plastic if you don't have a ruler. And now, following the grid, I start positioning the main elements of my sketch on a canvas. Remember that it's much harder to erase from the canvas because it's soft, so do not press hard on your lines. Now, unfortunately, in some parts of my video, uh, the camera has focused on my head and not on the drawing. I cut most of them out, but this is an important one. The central line is very important to find right away, right after you position everything. If you have a three-quarter position, make sure that the nose is sticking out more from the center, that forehead or lips, and align the eyes, draw guidelines for them. Eyes should be parallel to nostrils and lips. Once my drawing is ready, I start outlining it with a color that I assign for shadows. In my case, it's brown because I decided to have cooler lights and warmer shadows in my picture. But if you have a warm like red or a sunset orange light, then it's a good idea to choose something like blue or green or purple. As you can see, I'm not just outlining but shading my face too using a dryish brush and the same shadow color. If I don't do it, I can easily lose my pencil outlines when I start painting, so it's highly recommended. Later I will throw a base skin tone over it, add some highlights and my face will be ready. So I'm carefully shading it just the way I want it on the finished work. Once I'm done with the face, which I drew from the reference, I start putting shadows on the imaginary elements of my work and I keep the source of light in mind. Shadows are on the left on the face, they should be on the left on all the other objects. And I start coloring, always pointing the tip of the brush at the line I'm outlining, using larger brushes for larger details and smaller brushes for thinner lines and smaller elements. My paint is on the drier side and I'm not uh, using a very thick layer, so I can still see my drawing through it. For the background, I'm using a small brush. I'm trying to create some vibration in the sky. Um, but if you use a larger one, still be very careful with the touches. You don't want to overlap uh, the connection with some other element and then repaint that part. Just carefully connect the colors. Always point the tip of the brush at the line you're outlining. Now I mix the skin tone and rubbed it over the face, uh, making sure that I can still see some shading. And I'm close to being done. I took a small pointy brush and with the very tip I am uh, defining details that I want my viewers to look at first in first place. And I'm adding some accents and highlights to the face. And this is my finished work. As you can see, I added some highlights here and there, not just on the plastic areas, but on the face too. And I generalized the shadows on the face, on the kids, and some details on the waves. Alright, uh, this is my finished work. This is me, what I look alike. Let's start working on your stuff.